Hi Fools, welcome to another video from The Motley Fool. I'm Owen Benelak. I'm here to do a SWOT analysis of Tesco. This is a strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats analysis. Kind of tells you how the business is operating in its marketplace, where the opportunities lie and perhaps what can knock it on the head. So let's start with the strengths. Tesco is a very strong company. In fact, it's the UK's largest grocer. By any measure, that is a strength. One of the strengths that gives it is really good margins. Because it's so big, because it's so efficient, it can make a lot of money from its stores. It makes between 5 and 6% of margins. Probably going to be knocked back in the price war if we see one, but it's got a lot of firepower. It's got, margins can be cut, and it can still make decent money and basically pressure its rivals. Another really good strength. Third strength of the company is its club card. This is uh, the little card that you give at the till, you might get a discount or whatnot. It's great for Tesco because it tells us what we're buying, when we're buying it. It can sort of spot trends before we see them and maybe, say, if we're all having barbecues, it can go, right, better put more, more meat on the shelves. Really good strength. Another strength of Tesco is it's got overseas operations. This is a big difference between, say, Morrison's and Sainsbury's and Tesco. It has big operations in Asia and big operations in Eastern Europe. And finally, it has a big online presence. It's way ahead of its rivals, sold I think 300,000 now of its Huddle tablets. 98% of the population is within an hour of a Tesco delivery slot. Um, and it has 200 click and collect stores. So you can, all over the country, you can order from Tesco and then go and pick it up if you so choose. Big bunch of strengths there. But it has weaknesses. If you've opened up a newspaper business section recently, you'll have seen that Tesco is under the cosh. Profits are falling. Like for like sales in the UK have fallen worse across the Tesco empire, sales are falling. So basically, it's not great to be Tesco at the moment. Another problem that Tesco faces at the moment is that it's got a lot of big stores. Opened these in the boom times when everyone thought that hypermarkets were the way forward, could sell washing machines and whatnot. Turns out we'd rather buy them in other ways quite often. So it's got these big cavernous stores that's having to find innovative ways to fill restaurants and whatnot. Not ideal. Thirdly, it has seven billion or thereabouts of its last uh, as of its last interim results of net debt. That is manageable. Tesco makes a lot of money, as we've said. Wouldn't have been a problem in the old days. But if you were to ask management, would they like to be facing this kind of tough environment with or without 7 billion of debt? Guarantee they'd say with that. Price to book value. This is sort of talking about the assets of Tesco. It's again, it's, at a, it's a premium to, to book value. That in the normal times would be fine. It would deserve it because it would be a great business. Even now it probably deserves it. But compared to, say, Morrison's, which is trading well below the value of theoretically its property, you know, you're still paying a little bit of a premium for Tesco. And then finally, it has, I think, got a question mark over management. They may turn out to be the saviors of the company, maybe all their operations are brilliant, but at the moment they're still to be, still to be judged. So we get to opportunities, two big opportunities overseas and online. On overseas, it has an outlet. If it can start making a lot of money again, it can redeploy that money in higher growth regions of the world, such as, say, Thailand. And, and basically, it's a big difference to the other UK supermarkets who can really only give it out as dividends. So if the good times come back, Tesco has a way to spend its money you know, for years to come. And then online, it is, as I say, way ahead. And I think if there's any company in the UK that has any hope of standing up against Amazon in the long term, it is Tesco. Tesco has the distribution. It has built the infrastructure, has everything in place to be a real online competitor. And then threats, well, there's like-for-like -like sales that are declining. We are shopping. We're still buying stuff. Basically, we're going to more competitors. And Tesco's being attacked at both the low end and the high end. The low end by the likes of Aldi and Lidl. The high end the likes of Waitrose. Where sales are growing at 6%. This means its market share, while still the largest, is at a 10-year low. It basically hasn't been so low for a decade, about 28.6%. So it's still very big, but it's a threat. And then the other big threat, I think, is to its dividend. Years ago now, Neil Woodford got out because he was worried about the sustainability of the dividend. It pays 5%. It's the reason why a lot of people own Tesco. But if this price war gets protracted, if it can't build its business again, then you know it's going to have to pay that $7 billion in debt. And that dividend could be in trouble, which would be a big threat for the share price.